for who share his faith. The Ladina Amal of those who believe. Their light will shine forth before them. Nuru whom you saw by your ID, who be their money, and on their right. And they will pray, Our Lord, make your right light shine for us forever. Allahumma atimika na murana. Ya Allah, make our light shine forever for us. Walk through Lana and forgive us our sins. Certainly you have power over all things. The word Tawba in Arabic, Tawba Yatubu Tawbatan, Fawatai, Tawba Yatubu Tawbatan. Tawba means return. Linguistically, that is the meaning of Tawba, return. And in Islamic terminology, the word refers to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through repentance. The assumption is that we have walked away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By disobeying him, by slipping up, by making mistakes, by acts of disobedience. So Tawbah means to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through repentance after having walked away from him. And the verse says, talks about a tawbah to nasu, sincere repentance. And it says that if we do sincere repentance, Allah has promised us three things. The tangible results are three. Number one, He has promised to forgive our sins for us. This itself is the greatest blessing. Number two, He has promised to admit us into paradise. This blissful state of life that awaits us in the hereafter. Either in the hereafter, we enter a state of bliss or a state of perpetual torment, perpetual suffering. So Allah has promised if we do tawbah that He will forgive our sins and then He will admit us into Jannah. And finally, Allah has promised to bless us with the divine light. And this light will shine forth the faces, right side, left side, in front of us. And this is another great blessing. In another place in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls out to all of the believers. And this appears in Surah An Nur. All of us may remember something about the context of Surah An Nur. And this Surah was revealed in the context of the allegations, slander against the beloved wife of Rasulullah, Aisha Siddiqa. Some of the Munafati slandered her. And of course, I am not going to go into the details that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this surah to exonerate Aisha al-Mahmurha, to declare her purity. This, these are the verses we will be reciting until the end of times. What a great honor for Aisha, the Asadiqa, the beloved wife of Rasulullah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, while admonishing the believers, Allah says, وَتُوبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا Allah did not say, O oh, you who have sinned and slandered Aisha, you may tawbah. Instead, Allah addresses all of the believers, وَتُوبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا O oh, you who believe, all of you together should collectively make tawbah so that you may prosper. Today, all of us know that we are living in a, the most critical phase in our history. So there is nothing more important for us than coming back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through sincere repentance. We are in deep crisis. Wherever we turn, we see trials engulfing us from our sides. 
This is the time Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Takadu takuru fitanun tapit alayhi wa Times are coming. Times of crisis. Fitan one after the other. Years of sedition. Temptations. People are caught up in them, in this crisis that will follow one after the other, that many of them will lose their faith. You speak of the or you see A person who is a believer in the morning loses his faith by the time evening comes. And somebody who is a believer in the night, he wakes up as a cop. What happens? He sells his work, his religion, for a trifle price. Look around. You will see people selling their religion and going with the flow. It's very, very easy to flow with the car, to go with the car. The Prophet وسلم, in his farewell speech, Hajjatul Wida, warned us warned the believers against bloodshed. La tarju ba'di kuffaran yadri ba'lukum bil marwa. Do not go back to kufr. The state of Jahiliya. How? Yadri ba'lukum bil marwa. Each one cutting the throat of the other. This is the time. This is what is happening in the Muslim world today. It is true that Muslims have been victims of wars of occupation, resulting in millions of casualties. I am not denying that. We cannot blame the Muslim institution on ourselves, but we can only control ourselves. We cannot control others. It is equally true that many more Muslims are killed today by the so-called Muslims themselves. So, the warning of the Prophet has come true. Let us ask, are we then doomed? We have no hope. Is there a way out of this crisis, this mess? How can we reverse the situation we are in? The answer lies in coming back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and changing our inner conditions. This is what Allah said in another place in the Quran, in Allah, la yubayyiru ma bin umin, hatta yubayyiru ma bin umin. Allah is not going to change the condition of the people unless and until they change their inner conditions. So that is what we need to do. How do we do that? We do this. The first step is sincere repentance. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us repeatedly to make sincere repentance. When we say repentance, many people take it for saying, I am sorry, Ya Allah, forgive me. Actually, this is wishful thinking. Somebody confuses, mistakes, sincere repentance to simply say these words, it's wishful thinking. Iman is not achieved through wishful thinking. Iman requires consciousness, changing the consciousness, and taking tangible steps make action. It is not simply saying, Oh Allah, forgive me, or saying, I am sorry. Rather, Tawbah calls for serious work. It calls for deep remorse. Anadam. Anadam. Anadam means to feel deep sorrow within, that pain. It calls for new resolutions making new resolution, determinations, form resolution in our mind, 
It calls for ta taking tangible steps to make real changes in our lives, in the way we talk, in the way we act, in the way, in our mannerism, in our lifestyle. It's human nature to sin. Sin, there is no blame. You don't need to be ashamed of sin. The blame is only when we don't repent. You should not be ashamed of ignorance, but you should be ashamed of not removing that ignorance through learning. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kullu bani adama khatarun wa khayr khatayina atawa. Kullu bani adam. All children of Adam are hatta, are liable to mistakes, to sinning. The moment they we use the word sinning, people confuse it with adultery, with murder. Of course, sin has a much more wider uh, implication and significance. So, we may all slip up, we may all fall, but there is no need to despair as long as we are alive and we are willing to repent and make amends through repentance. So, one should not be ashamed of the sins one has committed, one should not be ashamed of the ignorance, but we should be ashamed if we don't take the steps to seek repentance. We should be ashamed that we are ignorant and that we don't take steps to acquire knowledge and remove that ignorance. What is sincere repentance? What is a tawbatul masoor? Sincere repentance is that which pleases Allah's Father. You know, I am just giving you just of the ideas of the great intellectual Imam Ghazali. His beautiful work, the magisterial work, Ihya Ulumuddin. We have taught lessons from it in this institute a number of times. And I will urge, inshallah, we are going to have podcasts short on living the path based on Ihya Ulumuddin, inshallah. And the announcement will be made, inshallah, it will start in a in September, inshallah, 20 minutes podcast, living the path based on the reality. So I am here presenting simple ideas from Ghazali because we cannot go into deeper details because of the constraints of time and space. So since repentance is that which praises Allah and brings us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is, I repeat, a believer's return to Allah holy in its totality. Believer has a mind, believer has a soul, believer has a body. Islam looks at human being realistically and addresses human being as he is. So repentance involves our body, our heart, our mind. So holy, turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after having turned away from him. It involves one's mind, it involves one's heart, it involves all of our faculties. The external and internal. Let us talk about Tawbah in the of the mind. Tawba of the mind. Repentance of the mind involves the following. Number one, we need to know ourselves. We need to know our Ishwan Vakara. And we need to realize our failure to observe our duties for that. So the beginning is First, we should be able to know who we are. And number two, we should know who Allah is. 
our Creator, our Lord, the bestower, the dispenser of all the sins. And then we need to recognize our Creator to observe our duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, it begins with the realization how Allah has showered us with His blessings and favors while He is not in need of anything. He is our money. He is self-sufficient. Whereas you and I, helpless teachers, the human being, human child, is the most helpless creature on the face of the earth. The baby that is born. Unlike the children, animal world. You see, even as soon as they are born, they can do certain things. But human child is the most helpless child. It cannot even, it needs to be led to the breast. That's not the case with the animal kingdom. And then this human being who is born helpless grows and develops that potential, all the faculties, and now he is ready to challenge the Creator. And then of course having attained that peak of health, slow down, I am now in that downward trend. And then, then we may be reduced once again to a most helpless state. So remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the source of everything that you enjoy today. And if you were to take away these blessings from you and me, we are the most helpless. So Allah doesn't need to bestow his favors on us. He has bestowed them on us. And yet, how do we meet the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We greet them with disobedience. We sin with our eyes, but we know it's a gift from Allah, which He can take it away from us. We sin with our mind, when we know, Imam Ibn Hazm says in his work, that he knows scholars who is to be, you know, just like libraries in retention of facts. But then, clean slate. Suddenly, they, everything in the slate of their mind is wiped out as if they didn't know anything. This could happen to me, this could happen to me. So, how dare we disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That is why any prayer of istighfar, any dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the best dua to Allah is first to recognize the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praise Him as it befits His glory and majesty and then recognize your own failure, your own limitation, your own helplessness. So it is said about Isa Islam that he used to say that nobody can enter the kingdom of God unless he becomes like a helpless child. This is al mutar somebody who is broken hearted. He has no word to turn but the last one. So, recognize the blessings. So, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said in that beautiful dua, I recognize your blessings upon me and I recognize my own powers, so forgive me. This is insane to From this knowledge of our state and our knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Penitent, somebody who is remorseful, should move on to the next level or the stage, which is repentance of the heart. So the repentance of the mind, intellectual cognition, and then repentance of the heart. This is best described by the condition of the Sahaba, who were guilty of a serious sin. The group of Sahaba in Surah Tawbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَلَى الثَّلَاثَةِ الَّذِينَ قُلِّفُوا حَتَّى إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَيْهُمُ اللَّهُمْ مِنْ عَرَضَتِ وَضَاقَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ مُنْفُسُهُمْ وَظَنُّوا أَنْ لَا رَجَعَ مِنْ اللَّهِ إِلَا إِلَيْهِ ثُمَّ تَعْبَ عَلَيْهِمْ يُوْتُوبُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ التَّوَاقِ To understand the full depth of this verse, 
Actually, we need another lecture for it. Actually, I would urge everyone to read the translation of this hadith, the hadith about the reported by Kaab ibn Malik, who was one of the three who did not join the expedition of the whole, although they had all the means to do so. But they fell into the temptation, they stayed behind, procrastinating. This is what happens when you procrastinate. You put up good things, as one of the sages said, you know, when you go to these graveyards, most of the people in buried there are casualties of procrastination. They did not put up going to Tim Hotel or movie. They put up prayer. They put up fasting. They put up charity. They put up good deeds. But everything else, yeah, go for it. Enjoy. The work for the hereafter, they put it off. So most of the people burying in the graveyards are victims, casualties of the sleep. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and he turned his mercy toward the three groups of believers who had fallen prey to corruption until in the end, after the earth, despite all of its vastness, had become too narrow for them. They thought the world, the earth, in spite of its spaciousness, is too narrow. They could not find anywhere to turn. No succor, no help, except to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when they felt that deep remorse and strong within, this is the darkness of the soul. You know, there is a darkness of the soul. Tawba, faith, darkness of the soul. The person feeling that deep remorse, experiencing it within. The Sahab, you know, the Sufis, prepared the penitents for it. They, they let them, you know, go into that spiritual retirement. So, so I am not here to talk about that, but the concept is real. Because it's explained in this Quranic verse. So finally, when they felt that deep remorse and it was expressed, they cried and cried and begged the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah opened his grave, the door of his darkness. Another example in the Quran is the story of Prophet Jonah or Yunus alayhi the man of the way, the fish man. Fanada fi The condition of Prophet Yunus was he had walked away from his mission because he was he became impatient. He, people would not hear him. They would not respond. So they thought they are hopeless. So he walked away. Allah did not order him to walk away. So he did walk away, and this was the biggest mistake. And then what? He got into that ship, and he got thrown into the water, and the wave belonged him. And in the darkness of the womb of that wave, he turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in utter despair. He cried, to, cried out to Allah in the darkness of the womb of that wave. La ilaha illa Allah. There is no God but you, Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inni kuntu minna al-Fahimi. Certainly I am one of those who have done wrong, who have wronged their souls. So when there is no experience of pain, there is no repentance. So if you say you repented of your past, and yet you release the memory of it, when you talk about it, you are smiling. That means what? There is no deep experience of pain. There is no sincere repentance unless one has cut off his links to his sinful past. Another thing is, cut off all the links to the past. 
The firm resolution is attested by to by tangible steps to make amends. These steps involve making amends for the past misdeeds. The steps include leaving the milieu that influenced him. That's enough. I remember one of my friends who died near the house mercy on him. He has walked away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then one day he came to me, here is Shaykh Futi. Here it is. He preserved, put all of his credit cards and cut them, chop them. And here is my ticket to Pakistan because in this milieu I cannot preserve my chastity. Man and man, he could not preserve his purity, his chastity. So he decided, because I had advised him, if you cannot continue to lower your gaze and go after harmonizing, you need to break free of this video. I had quoted the hadith of the Prophet told, and one day he came, he cut off all his credit cards, left them, and showed me the ticket, and I went tomorrow to Pakistan. Of course, he lived there many years, and a few years ago, I heard my friend has died. He lost one of the hours to him. I mentioned this, it's a lesson. This is the lesson that the Prophet teaches us in the story of the man who killed 100 persons. Murder is the greatest thing, sin. The most, one of the most heinous sins in Islam is murder. And the man had killed 100 persons. 100 people. And then the scholar advised him, you don't need to lose hope. You, you can hope for the mercy of Allah if you sincerely repent. Repent. Seek repentance. And the first step for you is to move away from this corrupt society. To go and live in a society that is virtuous, a virtuous city of all he pointed the city to him, and he was on his way, and the angels of death saved his soul. And of course the story ends in the hope that the man was forgiven because he took that step to repentance. Repentance is not just for those who have been guilty of major sins, such as murder or adultery or theft. Rather, it is crucial for each and every one of us even though we may be free of the above in a sense, no one is free of all types of sins because sins outward and wahira and batana, inward, secret and public, major and minor. One may ask, is there anyone among us who is free of such sins, including the following? Displeasing parents. Anyone here who never displeases parents? Or her parents? Anyone here who did not speak rudely to their parents? Anyone here who failed to take care of their parents and serve them honorably? The answer would be 99 cases no. Is there anyone here who is not guilty of severing the ties of Christian? <laughs> One who cuts the relation from relation cannot hope to get to Jannah. Did we commit this sin of suffering, stopping talking to a brother or sister or uncle or aunt because he did not visit you or bring congratulate you because your son won the race or whatever, pass the exam? Is there anyone here who is free of the sin of backbiting? All of us indulge in it. Day and night, Alhamdulillah. Is there anyone free of gossip? Is there anyone free of bearing false testimony? You know your friend has committed that crime, or violation, traffic violation, and yet you appear in the court witnessing for him, not against him. Is there anyone who has never hurt or offended anyone, including the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is there anyone who did not go for fishing and deep fishing, catch that fish and, and after taking it, drop it in water again for fun? You are not allowed to do that. It's a major sin. It has a right to live like you. You 
you are allowed to take that life only That's why Rasulullah used to say to Mujahideen, going for battle, don't kill an animal except for food. This is the meaning of halal nabiha. I did not create life, so I cannot take this life without seeking the permission of Allah. Get the permission of Allah. And He only permits you to take a life animal to, to feed yourself. Not for fun. The Prophet said, Whoever has been guilty of wronging others, let him experience for them here in this world before it is too late, and there is no way of redeeming oneself for them in the next world. For the only way you can redeem them in the next world would be by paying the victims from our own good deeds if we have it. Otherwise, they Sins will be imposed on us and we will be flung to the Alpha. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to use this remaining days of Ramadan. Cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Sufi. If you are free, if you are not going to work, spend 20 rakah and in Sufi cry to Allah. If you are not praying in the masjid, pray in your home. Make the sujood long and cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let tears flow. It is said about Mawlana Rumi that he shed so much tears in winter and they had to throw his beard for him to wake up from sujood. Actually, this is the state of the sages in Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspire us to turn to the independent and cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a beautiful that we need to be on a daily basis. Allahumma khulli dhambi kullahu yaqahu wa jillahu awfilahu wa ahrahu wa sirrahu wa alahi wa Allah forgive for me all of my sins minor and major the first and the last the secret and the open aku du qawli hadha astaghfirullah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah I took another five minutes there